place. Um, that was all successful and... Freedom, SpaceX, no scone secured for entry. Freedom copies for ship. We got some great news. The nose cone sequence is complete, meaning that the nose cone is now officially closed. As we begin the second half of entry, Dragon is now beginning to inject cooled nitrox into the air, be being delivered to the suits worn by Chell, Bob, Jessica, and Samantha. Now again, this is what will allow the crew to remain comfortable while external temperatures reach 3,500 deg degrees Fahrenheit. Now the heat shield is pointing forward, leading the capsule to the landing site. And speaking of the heat shield, Dragon's primary heat shield is comprised of PICA 3.0, which stands for Phenolic Impregnated Carbon Ab Ablator. First generation PICA was first developed by NASA for studying and sampling comets within our solar system. And SpaceX partnered with NASA to develop PICA-X, which was the second generation product used on all Dragon 1 CRS missions that successfully resupplied the space station on 20 missions. Then PICA 3.0 was developed specifically for use on Dragon 2 crew and cargo with enhanced structural and thermal properties that optimized the heat shield and drove down costs and mass. Now, the remainder of the Dragon capsule is comprised primarily of a SpaceX proprietary ab ablative material. It's another class of thermal protection which is lighter weight versus PICA and protects the underlying composite material or structure during re-entry to ensure the structural capabilities are maintained. And while Dragon will experience temperatures well over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit during peak reentry conditions, the characteristics of the TPS or thermal protection systems coupled with the ECLIS, environmental cooling and life support system, in the pressurized interior will, interior will help ensure that Chell, Bob, Jessica, and Samantha stay cool and comfortable during all phases of reentry through splashdown. Now, after Crew Dragon Freedom has re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, a series of parachutes will deploy, and that'll slow the crew's descent. Now, first will be the two drogue chutes, followed by the four main chutes to guide Dragon to its first contact with Earth since launching in April earlier this year. Dragon will automatically deploy these parachutes when different pressure and positioning sensors on the capsule detect that they are at the right speed and altitude. Vehicle velocity at drogue deploy is approximately 350 miles per hour, as we mentioned earlier, and those drogue parachutes do deploy at about 18,000 feet above the water. Now, vehicle velocity at main deploy is approximately 119 miles per hour and deploy at about 6,500 feet. Vehicle velocity at water splashdown is approximately 16 miles per hour, and the highest G-load the crew will experience during re-entry is approximately 3 to 5 Gs. So next up, we are looking ahead um, towards the comms blackout that we discussed as the crew re-enters the atmosphere. This is expected and can last a few minutes long, uh, but once the crew is on the other side of the comms blackout and we do regain um, communications with them, uh, the drogue chutes will deploy. We are tracking the, that first set of uh, drogue the first set of parachutes, the drogue chutes, to deploy ar around 1.51 p.m. Just a minute later, the main chutes will deploy, and then about three minutes after that, the moment we've all been waiting for, we'll see crew for splashdown off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. We are still tracking approximately 1.55 p.m. Pacific time today for that splashdown.
And so at this time, all of the recovery teams are in place. Um, those fast boats that we were talking about earlier have deployed, and we really are getting ready to bring this crew home. Everything has proceeded as expected with the deorbit burn. The nose cone is now deployed. And the next big milestone that we're looking towards is that communications blackout. Again, we have an awesome live view inside of the Dragon capsule, seeing our crew. And again, we've mentioned this, that they use the displays to monitor the activities that are happening with Dragon. But Dragon is flying autonomously, so they really just get to sit back and just monitor. So we did mention that we are looking towards entering a period where we will have a communications blackout with the crew. Um, that is because of the plasma that's building up, um, because we're using the atmosphere itself to help slow us down. We're going about 17,000 miles an hour, um, and we do need to slow the crew down before they re-enter the Earth's, before they splash down. Um, and as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, um, that will definitely happen. Um, they'll be going about 350 miles per hour once they enter the other side of the atmosphere. Um, and as we said, they'll be going less than 20 miles per hour at the time of splashdown. Freedom SpaceX for entry briefing. And uh, Freedom standby. VHL, I have no deltas from the previously briefed tablet timeline. Dragon systems are looking healthy and ready for entry. And we have no updates for splashdown. The recovery team is ready to support and weather's looking good. How copy? We copy all, Arthur. We're uh, looking forward to splashdown and, and uh, seeing the recovery forces. there chatting with the core here in Mission Control Hawthorne. That's what you're seeing there on your screen. You did get to see a live view of the crew in their seats in the Dragon capsule as they're making their way back home. Uh, the suit's primary function is to protect the crew in the event of a dabbing, cabin depressurization. And if that were to occur, the suit would inflate to provide a habitable environment long enough for the crew to return home. There, you can see them there. Right now, they are also uh, filling their suits with some cool nitrox that actually helps keep them cool. The suits are kind of an extension of the Dragon capsule. Uh, it's almost like they have their own personal AC unit on them. And the suits are flame-resistant materials on the outer layer. Also protects the crew in the event of a fire. They are custom tailored single piece suits. This means that the helmet, gloves, and boots all remain attached together. And the helmet that we were able to see on the screen that they're wearing is 3D printed nylon and does have a visor that pivots open. And then they do have quick disconnects or QDs uh, on the right thigh, which mates to an umbilical on the seat, and that is what provides the air for ventilation, oxygen, nitrox for pressurization, and allows the electronics to be connected all from a single location on the suit. And again, if you're just now joining us, we are live watching Crew 4 return home to planet Earth from the International Space Station. We've had the deorbit burn, we've jettisoned the trunk for the vehicle, and the nose cone has closed on Dragon Freedom. 
And again, another live view inside of the capsule there. And SpaceX from Freedom. Tablets are secure, restraints are tightened, and our visors are down. We are ready for entry. SpaceX copies for tablets, restraints, and visors. Please confirm that tablets are stowed with the loops as provided on the satchels. Copy, welcome. So we are now less than 20 minutes away from splashdown, and again, we are going to be entering that blackout communication period. But once we are on the other side of that, things will happen pretty quickly. The drug shoots will deploy. And the uh, SpaceX Freedom tablets are all secure. SpaceX copies. Thank you, Freedom. And at this time, we're just over five minutes from predicted calm blackout. We will see you on the other side at 2049. Okay, cop from uh, LOS, and we'll see you on the flip side at uh, 2049. And so you did hear those words from the ground up to uh, crew four, namely Chell Lindgren, just ensuring that the tablets are stowed and secured in the proper positioning ahead of the communications blackout expected now less than five minutes from now and really in anticipation of reentry and then splashdown. Um, as we were saying, the um, Pace is really going to pick up once we are through that communications blackout. The drogue parachutes will deploy, and then the main parachutes will deploy, and then we will see the crew splash down. After that, we'll see the fast boats head out to the crew, inspect it, make sure everything is looking good and the integrity of the vehicle is as it should be, um, and those main parachutes will also um, be cut. And then the recovery personnel will work on securing the vehicle and bringing it into the recovery vessel and then after um, some private medical checks with the crew we should see the crew egress a short time after that um, so again we are expecting the splashdown to occur at 155 pacific time so just a few minutes from now um, and we are coming up on that communications blackout that as that is as expected as well yeah, and this blackout period is basically when the vehicle is entering back into the Earth's atmosphere. It is heating up and plasma is building around the capsule, which prevents communications with here uh, in mission control. Uh, lasts about six minutes. It is nominal. Uh, and once we get through that blackout period, we do uh, make sure that the crew can communicate with the ground here in mission control. And we do have um, the NASA plane, the WB-57, which is up in the air, and it's equipped with some imaging technology that will be able to get pretty much the first views of the Dragon capsule on its return back to Earth. So we are getting some of that footage right now. Um, we are anticipating that communications blackout and loss of signal here shortly. This is really the beginning of that period where the crew themselves um, will be re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. And at this time, the Dragon is working through a slewing maneuver, uh, which means that the Dragon is helping to orient itself in the proper orientation ahead of the reentry of the Earth's atmosphere. Again, we're just a couple of minutes away from that anticipated blackout period.
We are just about a minute away from that communications blackout period. Again, it should last only about six minutes long. Um, this is what happens when uh, the vehicle begins to heat up as it's entering back into the Earth's atmosphere and builds up a layer of plasma around the vehicle. Again, this is nominal, um, and we will uh, establish uh, communications once the vehicle is through that period. So we are hearing that the Dragon is beginning to hit um, the Earth's atmosphere here, really at the upper limits of the atmosphere. Um, so that's going to help to slow the vehicle down quite a bit, uh, but we are now seconds away from the anticipated loss of signal. Standing by for confirmation that we are in the communications blackout. And as we await that confirmation, you can see the crowd is starting to grow um, here in Hawthorne uh, behind the Mission Control Center here. Looks like folks are trying to get a good view as we anticipate splashdown here in a little less than 15 minutes. Yeah, we do get pretty excited when we are bringing crew back home. It is pretty exciting to watch them as they touch back down on planet Earth. We've been out in space for about six months now. Again, we are currently in the comms blackout period. This is nominal, it lasts about six minutes. Uh, we are just a few minutes away from passing through this blackout period. At this point, we are entering a communications blackout period, which lasts approximately six minutes due to plasma formation around the spacecraft. Now, during this time, no vehicle telemetry is re received by Mission Control or the recovery team, and no external commanding of the vehicle or voice communication is possible. Now, as a reminder, Dragon is designed to fly itself, so during re-entry, the vehicle will be slowing down from orbital velocity, which is approximately 17,500 miles per hour. Now, the top temperature Dragon will experience upon re-entry is about 3,500 3, degrees Fahrenheit. And again, the blackout period is expected to last about six, maybe up to seven minutes long. And we are just about uh, four minutes remaining in this anticipated communications uh, blackout period. And during this re-entry phase, the team um, the crew, rather, is going to be uh, experiencing a uh, deceleration, and the team here on the ground is going to continue to monitor that, make sure that everything is proceeding as expected. But once we're on the other side of this communications blackout, that's when we'll begin to see the parachutes deploy, beginning with the drogue parachutes, and then following with the main parachutes, and then we'll see splashdown, and then the recovery process uh, to get the crew onto the recovery vessel, and then out of the capsule will begin. 
And we did mention the high temperatures that the vehicle is seeing during this blackout period. So there is nitrox flowing through the suits that the astronauts are um, in, and that helps keep them cool while the vehicle is getting very hot on the outside. So we are getting our very first views there from the WB-57 of the capsule as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Um, those views coming from an infrared camera that is on board. So the team will continue to track Dragon as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. We now have about three minutes remaining in the blackout period, but again, the WB-57 that is deployed is getting those views of Dragon already. Once the expected blackout period is over, the core here in Mission Control will attempt to establish communications with the crew. So you may hear some callouts checking in with the crew. Uh, and they will make that call out until the crew does respond, which will confirm acquisition of signal. We have about two minutes remaining in the anticipated period of uh, communications blackout. Now, it's not an exact science. There might be some variation that occurs. Uh, we might hear from the crew a little earlier the, than we expected or potentially a little bit later. Um, but we are all on the edge of our seats eagerly awaiting um, to hear from the crew. So far, everything looking good. Dragon SpaceX com check. Continuing to get those views from the WB-57 of Crew Dragon as it uh, continues to make its way closer and closer to splashdown. Freedom, SpaceX, com check. Jesse, it is absolutely phenomenal to hear from the crew on the other side of that communications blackout period. We are continuing to get these great views from the WB-57 high-altitude aircraft, providing that thermal imagery. Um, we did even see the tail of entry of the vehicle, and it's just absolutely um, beautiful to see that. So we also heard a... We did hear a call up to the crew that um, they are expecting the automated drogue deployment. So we're, we're just standing by for confirmation that Dragon's shoots have deployed. Again, there will be a set. Freedom SpaceX, brace for drogue window. Bracing for drugs. Core here communicating with the crew, giving them a heads up that they should feel the drug shoots deploying here shortly, followed by the main shoots just about a minute later. 
the, the drogue chutes do help to slow the vehicle down to about 350 miles per hour, whereas the main chutes will deploy, uh, after the main chutes deploy, it will slow the vehicle down even more, and by the time that the vehicle splashes down, it should be around 16 miles per hour. And there's those drug shoots, and you can hear the crowd here very excited to see them deploy. Drogue shoot descent rate nominal and visual on two healthy drugs. Freedom copies. Very cool view of Dragon with the two drogue shoots. We are just anticipating the main shoots to deploy here shortly. Nominal, visual on four healthy mains. And great news, as you can see there, the main chutes have deployed, slowing the Dragon vehicle down significantly down to approximately 119 miles per hour. Freedom is 1,000 meters. Copy 1,000. Now Dragon has saved all propulsion systems and is now terminating the nitrox suit and cabin purges and is beginning to increase. Freedom is 800 meters. Copy, 800. Dragon is beginning to increase pressure in preparation for landing. And mission control, the mission control team here in Hawthorne is reporting the precise landing coordinates to the recovery team. So we did get that confirmation on the main shoots. 600. 600. The crew is now 600 meters away from splashing down. We do expect splash down in about two minutes from now. Landing in water is simpler, therefore more reliable, and it provides more margin against unlikely parachutes. 400 meters. Copy four. Provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. We had to learn how to make Dragon waterproof. But once you do, it is a rinse, review, and reuse type of process. And we are just about a minute away from splashdown of the Dragon vehicle back onto planet Earth. And hearing good call-outs of the altitude of Dragon. Freedom's at 200 meters. We're bracing for splashdown. Copy. Brace for splashdown. And again, that descent rate is as expected here. Pretty soon we should be able to see the view of the ocean come into view as Crew Dragon Freedom with four astronauts on board prepares to splash down after spending 170 days in space after launching on April 27th. Watching Dragon splash down back on planet Earth. 
Now, as you can see on your screen, we have a visual confirmation for a splashdown of the Dragon spacecraft. Dragon Freedom has returned home, and NASA astronauts Cho, Bob, Jessica, and ES... SpaceX Freedom, we are water upgrading and stable one. Copy Freedom. We see stable one. You are go for 4.800. And on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. Thanks for flying, SpaceX. And uh, SpaceX uh, from Freedom, thank you for an incredible ride up to orbit and an incredible ride home. Glad to be back. As you can see, Dragon Freedom has returned home, and NASA astronauts Chell, Bob, and Jessica, and ESA astronaut Samantha are back on Earth after an approximately five-hour return journey from space. The SpaceX recovery ship and team has been waiting for Dragon Splashdown, and they will now make their way to the Splashdown location. And we did hear the call out that the vehicle is in stable one. That's the configuration that we are hoping for. Stable one means it's in the ocean upright as expected. And you can see that exactly on your screen here. So the teams have been ready and waiting about three nautical miles away. So it's going to take them about 30 minutes or so to make their way to Chell, Bob, Jessica, and Samantha inside. Um, but about a minute and 30 seconds after um, the landing, Mission Control, Hoth Thorn um, will give the go for final approach and the safe approach. Um, and then about two minutes after landing, the approach boat will begin those inspections that we discussed earlier. Um, that's just to ensure that everything is as expected with the vehicle. Next dragon completed. Waiting for. SpaceX copies Dragon 4 awareness. Com is a little bit choppy, but we copy that you are complete with 4.800 and awaiting recovery personnel. I will provide an update on recovery forces in a couple minutes. How copy? Standing by. And Mission Control here in Hawthorne did give the go for that approach and recovery. And so here shortly, we should be able to get some views of the fast boats as they approach uh, the Dragon Freedom with the crew still on board. Freedom, SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside within the next couple minutes. And there you are getting a view of those fast boats as they approach the vehicle. They will essentially be doing some safety checks, making sure that all the ordinances and hypergalls are um, not present or in the area immediately around the vehicle. And they'll also perform an, ex an inspection of the capsule itself to make sure that integrity-wise it is looking good. You are seeing that very first fast boat approach the vehicle there. And they really want to do these inspections to make sure that everything is looking good before they do hoist it up into the recovery vessel. 
So it will take a little bit of time before we do see the crew egress or exit the capsule. We're shooting for less than an hour to bring the Dragon onto the recovery ship and open the hatch to egress. Once these checkouts are complete, you'll see a member of the recovery team actually climb on board the capsule. Freedom SpaceX for camera configuration. We are looking for permission to come on board via the display camera view only. And Freedom, we are back on board with the display cam. Recovery personnel are on alongside. Okay, copy all. Thank you. <laughs> and getting some waves from the crew on board Freedom post splashdown. Looks like they're doing pretty well. First time feeling. Uh, gravity in 170 days. <laughs> it looks like they're waving uh, to the world, technically. Uh, the crew will remain in their seats um, all the way until they are brought on board the recovery vessel. Now, we do expect to hear some words from NASA's Brandy Dean, who is actually on the recovery ship and was able to witness the reentry and splashdown of Crew Dragon Freedom. Brandy, if you're able to hear us, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to witness four humans return to Earth after their mission aboard the International Space Station? day for a smackdown. Um, I'm hope for a little rougher than they've been in the past, but it's still uh, it's a gorgeous, it's a beautiful day. Um, watching the, the capsule down, um, the, the uh, parachutes were just throwing the sun behind them. It was gorgeous. And so we are now underway and making our way towards the um, The team here on the boat was so excited. There were cheers. We heard the um, double sunroom as it answered. And got to see it, the uh, drove shoes in the in the way way that really make its way down. So it's been a really great day so far. We're looking forward to seeing the crew here on board the ship. That's wonderful to hear, Brandy. Can you tell us a little bit about what the crew is doing and is done to prepare for this moment from your perspective as you've been on the recovery vessel? You, Brandy, here I'll, I'll repeat it. Freedom SpaceX Hypergull sweeps and unfired, or, unfired ordnance checks nominal. The rigging is in process. Progress approximately two five minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC with SpaceX flight surgeon. Okay, Freedom copies all. Hypergull checks are passed, uh, and we're about 25 minutes out for standing by for PMC. So, Brandy, if you're still with us, we did just hear that all of those hypergall checks went as expected, and we can see um, that the rigging has begun. I'm sure you have a much better view of it yourself on the boat, but can you tell us a little bit more about what the crew on the boat is doing to get ready for the next steps to bring the capsule onto the boat? Uh -huh. 
and it sounds like we may have lost uh, Brandy. They are out at sea, so communications can be a bit spotty. We might be able to join back with her um, a bit later, but you are seeing right now um, someone on the capsule. They are doing what is called rigging. You see that they're tossing um, some different equipment up to them, and that's to ensure that the vehicle is ready. Freedom, SpaceX, I'll be privatizing Dragon to ground now. The next call you hear will be from the SpaceX flight surgeon on the recovery vessel. Freedom copies. And so those call outs about a private medical conference just to ensure that the crew is all feeling healthy um, and if there's anything that they may need medically wise once they do get on the boat. Uh, that is, of course, privatized for medical um, and person, personal reasons. Um, but we are continuing to get really great views here of the rigging process. As I was saying, this individual is working to secure Dragon and enable it to be lifted onto the recovery vessel here and just a short time from now. And so once this process is complete, the next steps will be to hoist up Dragon and place it onto the boat, onto the platform. Um, and then that platform itself will be moved so that the crew can egress a short time after that. Then once the crew is on the boat and back inside of the capsule, they will board helicopters that are on the boat to bring them back to Ellington Field, which is near the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And then they will bring European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Cristofredi um, back to Europe. with us. So Brandy, if you can hear us, can you tell us a little bit about what the crew on the vessel is doing to prepare for the capsule to be placed um, onto the boat? We did see the, the rigging that was taking place, but um, I'm sure you have a much better view from your perspective. Things like having them step up 
affairs and see how they're able to handle that, having been in space for several months, and uh, get on the ground looking like they fall in and, and try to pack up. Things like that that will really help us um, be sure that we're ready when we're sending crews to different dry land in the future. And then from there, um, they'll get on uh, planes, go back to Houston. Um, they will spend at least the night, or the, the Americans will spend at least the night in three quarters at Dark Space Center to make sure they're doing well before they jump right into their recovery period of uh, medical tests, scientific tests, and a lot of exercise to get them reconditioned and, and used to life back in gravity again. Um, meanwhile, Samantha will be going back to Europe. Uh, she'll, she'll be pretty much right away once they get back to Houston. Thank you so much, Brandy, for that insight and sharing your firsthand experience of what it was like to witness splashdown from the recovery vessel. We really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us, but we'll let you get back to it and enjoy your time out there. And as recovery procedures continue as expected, um, we did have a splashdown that occurred at 1.55 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon, and you do see a wonderful photo on the left hand of your screen of that splashdown with the main parachutes all deployed, really the moment that Crew Dragon Freedom touched Earth again for the first time in 170 days. So we do see the recovery vessel continue to approach the Crew Dragon Freedom vehicle. You are seeing on your screen a live view inside of the Dragon capsule with our crew patiently waiting in their seats. They will remain uh, harnessed into their seats until uh, the hatch is actually opened on the Dragon vehicle. And we did see the rigging process that was taking place a short time ago, and now we're getting another view of it here. Um, that person on the capsule is, is called the rigger, and they are working to secure Dragon to rigging hardware to safely lift it up and out of the water. And that will be done using that A-frame, um, which is the boxy frame that you see um, towards the back of the boat there. We are getting some pretty great views with this being in the daytime. Uh, we have splashed down in the nighttime where it's a little bit harder to see, but today we've got some light and get to watch the process pretty clearly here. Looks like a really beautiful day out there in Jacksonville. <laughs> Now, I am hoping that we will have the chance to see the rigger jump off of the vehicle. That's always <laughs> one of my favorite parts. We are now excitedly awaiting the recovery of our Dragon spacecraft with NASA astronauts Chell, Bob, Jessica, and ESA astronaut Samantha inside. Dragon has already autonomously completed several steps to safe itself following splashdown. 
Now, for those of you just joining us, the mission has gone smoothly so far. Dragon successfully splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida at 1.55 p.m. Pacific time. Approximately five hours before splashdown, Dragon autonomously undocked from the International Space Station and completed a series of departure burns. The, the, jet, the trunk was then jettisoned, and the final burn, the deorbit burn, was completed to place Dragon on a trajectory toward Jacksonville, Florida. Dragon successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, followed it by deployment of its parachutes to slow the spacecraft down to a gentle splashdown. And we saw that moments ago, um, just a few minutes ago, rather, uh, and we had really gorgeous views of it. So we're now following the final part of Chell, Bob, Jessica, and Samantha's journey as Dragon is going to be lifted out of the water and placed on the recovery boat. Upon detection of landing, Dragon autonomously releases the main chutes to prevent wind from pulling the spacecraft. Dragon then uh, automatically saves any pyrotechnics still present on the vehicle and may automatically perform additional minor system reconfigurations. The astronauts remain seated and in their seats and in their suits as well at this point, but the onboard air conditioning keeps temperatures in check inside of the spacecraft and the communication systems on board remain powered so that the crew can continue to communicate. And we did see that motion of the A-frame as it was getting ready to lift the capsule up and out of the water. Now, SpaceX does have two fast boats in the recovery fleet, uh, which have moved to the splashdown point already. Um, they were followed by the main recovery vessel, which is really getting ready to lift the vehicle now at this, at this point. So those two fast boats do have a very specific role. The first is to a the first approach is focused on immediate safety inspection of the capsule integrity and checking for any presence of hypergolic propellant vapors, ensuring that it is safe for the recovery vessel to approach the Dragon spacecraft. All of those checks performed well. And once the spacecraft is cleared for full approach, the team begins rigging the capsule for water recovery by the recovery ship. That process is underway um, and just wrapped up. And then the second boat is really responsible for parachute recovery and serves as a redundant boat to the first. We'll also see a team member on a jet ski helping to gather up the now detached parachutes, and it looks like um, they may have already completed that process. I'm not seeing them. They might be just off the screen. Now, it took a little over 10 minutes for the recovery crew to complete their safety checks, and once they did complete that, the... Freedom SpaceX contract. Working is complete. Please brace for capsule lift. Copy that. Bracing for capsule lift. Great news. All preparations for rigging have been completed with that confirmation of the comms there. So we should see Dragon start to lift out of the water here in just a few seconds. And the recovery teams are now preparing to lower the vessel's hydraulic lift mechanism into the water uh, to bring the spacecraft into the on-deck translation system known as the deck. Dragon will remain in, known as the nest, um, and Dragon will remain in this nest during the crew extraction and then for the journey back into port. So here momentarily we will see the capsule being lifted and set on the nest. It will then be centered and oriented and then translated into the hangar underneath the helipad aboard the ship so that we can open up the hatch. And once open, a SpaceX medical doctor will be the first one to check in on Chell, Bob, Jessica, and Samantha and see if they are ready for egress or getting out. And you see that motion underway now as Dragon is lifted into the nest. This is a very cool view and cool process as we lift the Dragon vehicle and you can see the nest there that it's going to be sat down into.
Wild Dragon's top hatch is used to connect the connect to the space station. The astronauts will egress from the Dragon's side hatch, uh, pending capsule orientation in the water. Now, before opening the hatch, the spacecraft's cabin pressure must be equalized with the outside environment. Once the hatch is opened, that will be the crew's first breath of fresh air since boarding Dragon at the start of their mission back in April. So it is important to note that Chell, Bob, Jessica, and Samantha will be getting some assistance from the recovery team while they are exiting the capsule. This is the same process for any returning long duration crew members as returning to a gravity environment can wreak havoc with our vestibular system responsible for maintaining balance and motion. And of course, safety is always our number one priority. So you'll see Chell, Bob, Jessica, and Samantha helped out of the capsule and assisted the few feet to the medical quarters aboard the boat and if you've ever watched crews return on a Soyuz mission this is the same process as when astronauts are carried from the capsule to waiting chairs and then carried to a waiting medical tent so it looks like we are getting views now of dragon in the nest successfully lifted up out of the water And so once the crew egresses the capsule, um, this is a period where any time critical cargo can also be recovered from the spacecraft with um, the remainder waiting. Rita, SpaceX, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are going to be completing final checks and stand by for translation to the egress platform. Freedom copies. Great news there as Dragon sits in the nest there and you did hear some comms. What they're going to do is once they derig this, they will slide the Dragon vehicle to a platform where the astronauts can easily exit uh, that side hatch there. And for those of you that might be just joining us, we did have crew four successfully undock from the International Space Station just about five hours ago. Um, and they splashed down at 1.55 p.m. Pacific time. All went as expected through the deorbit burn and the parachutes deployed as expected. The capsule is now lifted onto the boat and we are standing by for the translation to occur. Um, and once that translation um, moves the Dragon capsule up underneath the helicopter pad, um, the recovery team will then be able to work on um, opening up the hatch and removing the crew from the capsule. Crew 4 did splash down just about 30 minutes ago and is now already on the recovery vessel. The recovery vessel being used today is uh, named Megan after Crew 2 astronaut Megan MacArthur. So we are standing by for that translation maneuver to occur. 
can see on the recovery vessel the platform that they will translate the Dragon vehicle to. If you saw the view earlier, the hatch is uh, slightly above ground level, so that platform will allow the crew to exit the vehicle. Again, if you are just now joining us, the Crew 4 crew is now back on planet Earth. They are still inside of their seats and suits inside of that Dragon capsule that you see there on your screen. And so after this translation maneuver occurs, uh, the next steps will be for the folks on the recovery vessel that are specialized in opening up that side hatch uh, that will begin that process. Now we have mentioned that we do have medical doctors on board that will help take care of the crew after the hatch opening and will conduct a series of initial checks um, before they are flown by helicopter back to shore. The recovery vessel, as you can imagine, takes quite a bit of time to get out um, into the splashdown zone, so the crew is flown um, off of the vehicle on helicopters and then take um, aircraft and fly um, back home to Houston for our three NASA astronauts on board and then for our ESA astronaut on board, uh, Samantha Christopheretti, she'll head back to Europe. And the crew has been out in space on the International Space Station for about six months. Uh, they do get to work out while they're out on the space station, working out in microgravity. Um, but that is why the medical team is there, to make sure that they are safe and healthy, make sure that they are able to uh, adjust to gravity. Uh, it's probably a, a pretty big adjustment being uh, gone from gravity for such a long period of time. So the medical team will be there to make sure that they can exit the vehicle safely and then we'll do some uh, private medical checks with each of the individuals. And I'm loving these views here of the recovery vessel. Um, we don't often get to see this because sometimes uh, it is nighttime. Uh, depending on uh, when undocking and splashdown does happen for the crew members. So this is a pretty nice treat to get to see this great view. And you can see the helicopter pad on top of the recovery vessel there that Sandra was mentioning. There will be a helicopter that comes and lands there shortly once the crew is uh, or has egressed the Dragon vehicle and is ready to fly back uh, to land and then take a uh, another flight on a plane to Houston with Samantha taking flight back to Europe. And it looks like we are seeing that translation maneuver underway. And coming up next, once this translation maneuver is complete, the crew on board will begin to open up that side hatch. 